There we go. So we're actually in the last mission of the parak. Yutet Amid Beis, Amid Bet, or Yutet Amid Beis, about six lines at the bottom. And I really, with the, with the help of Hashem and all of us, will finish the parak tonight. Okay, that's really my intention. It's uh, it should not be that complicated, and then we'll talk about what we're doing afterwards, okay? Absolutely. Right. Your testament basis. We, look, as we've seen, the first parak talked, the first half of the first parak talked about Hotzah, carrying, and then it went on to uh, different sundry topics from topic to topic, and it got involved with the halachos that were learned in the Aliyah of Hananya ben Kiskia, and then a number of other halachas, and we <laughs> ended up talking about things that needed to start before Shabbos, ah. right, to at least reach a certain plateau of whether soaking dye or, or putting um, the wool into the oven to dry, not to dry out, to become whitened. And, um, and this is one, this is Mishnah in line with all of that. So um, it's going to talk about Pesach a little bit, but it's really about the Shabbos. You'll see it's Shabbos. So, um, and it should be should be good. I hope I remember all the some specialized words here. So the Mishnah says, "Ain't solin baser but batzel ubeya," that you can't roast um, meat. Uh, batzel is an onion, or a beya is beitzo, right, an egg. Ela kadeshi atzulu mibodyom. This actually was brought a little bit early in the parak. You can't roast this until they're going to roast. Um, be roasted by day. These are some of these are more co- more complex. Some of them easier, but those you have to give them enough time to actually be roasted before Shabbos comes in. You got to put them in, so to speak. Now, how much has to actually be cooked? So the Gemara will actually talk about something. It doesn't have to be fully cooked. It has to be edibly cooked, or what we would call extremely rare. Right? When you go into the restaurant and they want to give you the fan steak, right? It's rare, well done, very rare. So the Gemara will talk about something called Machal Ber um, Ben Drusai. Drusai is a third of the way roasted, a third of the way cooked. Mr. Drusai was a highwayman, he was a Ganaf, and he was always on the run. So he never stayed too long in one place. <laughs> right, so as a result, probably when he had to roast food, he probably would have to come out of hiding. Right, so the moment he started roasting it, he, t- he grabbed it, uh, it was fast, fast food in the, in the fastest sense. So, it, but anyway, so, it, so that's the level it needs to reach, but it, it doesn't have to be completely, but it, you see there has to be a certain degree of having been roasted before, before Shabbos, and that's the minimum amount. Now, next thing. You can't put bread in the oven when, as it begins to, you know, at sunset. Um, and uh, it has to be a certain amount before. We'll see in a moment how much before. Velo charara agabe gecholim. Charara was some type of um, cake or some kind of wafer or cracker that they put onto the coals. And I'm not sure exactly why, but you know the bread, the breads that they made were like the um, they put them into the oven like the laffers are made, where they slap them onto the side of the oven, right? So the bread was probably higher. Uh, the fire is on. Think of this oven as a big triangle or a big um, cylinder or a big kind of box, and the opening was on top. It really, it's really like the Lafa ovens. If you see them in Dr. Lafa, the, or the, well, I don't know, they keep changing. They keep opening and closing. It's hard to say what we have here anymore. It's, a, it's the same oven, though. But the same <laughs> oven goes around. But. Could be. Uh, at any rate, um, where they take the top off and they actually take this uh, piece of dough, which is a round piece of dough, and basically slap it in. And then if you overwatch them, you could, um, uh, you see them put in the thing to get it out. So, the, however, the charara was a type of flat wafer, a cracker, that was put down on the coals itself. Does anybody know what the, the Hebrew word, shin, tet, va, va, shet, he says, batsek. Shatuach is to be lied out. That's what I think. So he says, batsek shatuach, is what he's saying. In charara, he has in brackets, batsek shatuach. So I guess it's just so a some flat. Kind, it's a flat, flat bread, flat I guess. I guess a, flat, a flat well, bread. Well, batsek is the dough, he's saying. Right. Flat dough, right? That's I guess they put it was a flat kind of cracker dough. Okay, think of the flat breads that you get when you go to a bar mitzvah wedding and they put them on the table. Right, I guess we'd call them matzah if they were pasted there. Covered in coals. But whatever it was, they they put them on the coals and the coals wouldn't absorb the dust. I guess they and you know the, the coals were there. Maybe it was right on top of the coals, but the bottom line was it put it there and it stayed there and um, whatever. 
Um, and the Rashi actually, uh, oh, so that's a Hararo. Rashi right. says, Ugad um, Ritzafim. Uh, he quotes a Pasuk of Malachi and then says, well, Jonathan's not here. Fugaro Belaz. That sounds French. Any Frenchies here? No French. Fugara. Fujara. We don't, know, we don't even know if it's really French. So let's go on. It says Ugot. Remember, remember when doesn't it say? Ugot Matzot. Right, right. We have in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the Haggadah. Right. He says it's from a, actually from an Italian word. Fugaza. Okay, Fugaza. Well, there you go. Okay. So, but whenever there's a something flat and it was put on the bottom, once again, it's going to need a fire to keep it going. How much has to actually be baked in these two items, the bread which is slapped onto the side of the oven or the charora which is put on the bottom of the oven where the coals are? That the face of the outside of the bread or the cracker will become uh, hardened, crusty. So in other words, the inside can still be baking, but the crusty stuff will, the outside will be crusty. And then on this, we have a bit of an explanation or a, um, a variation. Rav Lezomer, Kedei Shikram Hatach Don Shalom. The bottom part, that's, that's facing now the cold, question is, well, it's not clear what the bottom is. When you're taking a piece of bread and you have a triangle oven and you slap it onto the top of the triangle, which is what you're doing in the dough, which is the bottom and which is the top? Part touching, I would say. The is the part, is the bottom the part touching the side of the oven, or is the bottom what's actually physically the bottom? Because this is what a kira was, was almost like this, like a triangle. So you're taking and putting it here. The top of the bread, which you would consider the top of bread, is really the bottom, facing towards yeah, the bottom. But, but so the Gemara will talk about it. You'll see there are two opinions, okay? If you take it out of the oven, you put, you put the, I would think you put the, you put the bottom side, the, the part. Correct. The everything is, everything is relative, right? The bottom is the top, the top is the bottom. We don't do that, by the way, today. Okay, don't try this at home. Okay, right? If you have a baked bread, you don't put your breads upside down unless you have a laugh oven. You put your breads in a bread pan. You put because of gravity. Right side up. Yeah, because of gravity. gravity. Because, because of gravity, right? But, but the same they, gravity they had in those days. Yeah, but it sticks. <laughs> yeah, but the left no, no, sticks. No, no, but the, but the <laughs> left <laughs> sticks to the, to, the, to the oven. <laughs> so even, it's just, even though there's gravity, but it's sticking. And, the guy, and what the guys would do is when they touch it, it falls off, and then they know it's cooked. That's what okay. I thought. Like they just, they, they just Maybe. Uh, and I don't know. At any rate, our breads are made differently, and, uh, but it's the same kind of concept. So either it's a complete outside or the outside on one of the sides, which the Gemara will determine whether it's the bottom, which is physically on the bottom, or the bottom, which is actually attached to the roof of the oven, or the, almost the roof. So, but, and all of this means that it's cooked enough that you're actually not going to um, um, interrupt it or go to mix up the coals or stir the coals or clean the coals. All of this is done that you would, you're you happy to let it go. If you start to move it at this point, everything will fall apart, and it's cooked enough that you just want to let it finish up. Okay, so basically you can let things go in autopilot. You're not doing anything, but we want to make sure that you're not going to be playing around with the coals and the fires and all that. Okay, next thing. There's two lines at the bottom of the, of the page. Mishal Shlima Sepesach Betanam Chashecha. So this is about... When they um, when Pesach comes on um, on sh- on actually Shabbos Pesach can be Friday night, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Was that this year? No, this year it's um, mm-hmm. this year it's when is Pesach? Sunday, Monday, whenever it comes. comes Friday, yes, it can come Friday night. So um, and what would happen? They would um, roast. I'm sorry. They would kill the carbon Pesach on Erev Pesach. They would shecht it. And they would and they would actually roast it beginning on the end of Erev Pesach and put it into what was an oven, um, and it's on a spit. But the, usually what it is, it looks like a big, uh, it looks like once again, the key is you're ending, you're putting it in from the top, you're taking this little lamb or sheep or whatever it is, and remember it's, it's whole, and it's on a wooden spit. You can't break it into lamb chops and everything else. And they basically would insert it into the oven and that, that's how it would get roasted. I know we all have this picture of like it's sitting on the spit and ever someone turning it around. Yeah. They might have done that too, but this is um, what it really was. And they have, and on this wooden spit, by the way, they have the kraayim, the, the intestines, and the, all the things are there and you can't break a bone. Okay, so but the point... Okay. So they would, they would have it, take it to the base of Migdash, Right. First, and then take it they home. would they would take it to the Harabais. They would right. take it home. Harabais, I mean. Right. right. Oh, they, and they would actually roast it there. It has Where? to be ro- Harabite? on Harabite. Erev yeah. Shabbos. 
well, they start it. They would start it, and you're eating it on the night of Pesach, which is Friday night. Not on the Harabite. That's what I'm trying yes, to picture. Yeah, yes, yes, Harabite. Well, yep, all of Israel was sitting on Harabite. On, on yes, on Yushalayim. Yes, they are. Than Not Yushalayim on Harabite. That talks about that they were just you know. And the last group, there were three groups that went, and there was wall to wall people. The last group stayed actually pretty much um, where the where the Israelim could be in the base of Mikdash because they couldn't get out. It was stuffed. That's, they, they're all settled down on this. We, we're thinking of Harabayit as like a place that's fairly closed in. I guess there was rooms for people to move. I don't know. So, um, uh, so at any rate, while we, norm, while we normally wouldn't do this on a normal Friday night, we're talking about making sure everything is roasted before Shabbos comes in, or mostly roasted. We just said, we started the mission by saying, mm-hmm. With the carbon Pesach, it's different. So says the Mishnah, Mishal Shem is a Pesach. Mishal Shem is like basically you, you slide in. You're sliding into this oven in the Tanur with Chashech as it gets dark. Okay? In other words, and we're not concerned, this is the Chiddush of the Mishnah, that we're not concerned that people are going to start to add to the coals and play around with the fire as this carbon Pesach is sitting and roasting in the oven on Pesach night, on, which is Shabbos yeah. night, Friday night. And the reason this is, the markers, they were the, the Chaburo were Zrizim. They were very careful. Everybody wanted to make sure you did this well. This was a once a year event. Right? It's like, you know, like your Seder. You want to make sure the Seder runs well. Like anything, you have to prepare when the family comes together. So therefore, he the, 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 says the Bnei Chabur was Zerizim, and if anyone began to forget and start to mix the coals, they say, stop, Shabbos, stop it, what are you doing? Right, so we stop it right away. Why is this different from the previous? I don't follow the Because different? The, what's different is you got groups coming together. Everybody's doing the Karim Pesach. If someone were to, to deviate, and begin to and what what could be the problem Friday night with with uh, putting food in that's raw? You'll come to you'll come to mix the coals up. You'll make the fire greater or make the fire smaller. You want to adjust okay. it because it's getting too too burned, not let, not burnt enough. So you're not going to do it because. So you won't do it because everybody is careful to make sure they're on their best okay. behavior. Okay. So the term that's used is reason. Reason means they're zealous, they're careful, they're quick to do it. So they, so therefore, because of this, you can put the carbon pesach in this oven, which is going to roast it, even as this begins, the sun begins to set. Just starting to cook. Just starting to cook. In other words, it's raw. You put it in as the sun, the sun is setting, im chashecha, and you let it, you let, not cook, roast. You let it roast for Friday night. Rabbi. Okay. Yeah. There must have been hundreds and hundreds of these ovens. It must have been, yes. It must have probably sure. as smoky as uh, Mayron is on Lag Bomer, yes. Okay, correct. Yeah? The main difference between the first case is everybody's watching you. you know? Right, <laughs> correct. In public, right? So, um, yeah, it's, it's a different society, and, you know, it's hard for us to imagine. It's really, it's really hard for us to imagine what this looked like and how it would take place in the modern um, scenario. Yeah. What, what, would we, what would we do today? If Mashiach were to come this before this uh, Pesach, what would we do? Work, let him work it out. Exactly. I know. I, I, like I, I think I once told you that I, I asked him, Machona Mikdash, like, how is this going to play out with all these Korbanos? And they explained to me, basically, if you think of going to Sobeys, you don't go behind. You don't go behind Sobeys where they're traboring and cleaning the animals, the, the carcasses. You're buying like you know something as saran wrap, as freeze wrap. They say they probably be the same thing. You buy the carbon. Someone brings the carbon into the back room, and they, they come in the front, and they all have it all you know ready for you to kind of go. And they'll take care of the processing. So we, we, this is hard to imagine. I don't know how it really play out, plays out, but you've got to kind of put it in that kind of setting, uh, right? He's looking at the old world and today's mindset. All right, correct. Where okay. In Israel, we Ready to go, correct. And sometimes, yeah. sometimes they let them do it, and sometimes they don't. Right? There's sometimes they trouble. Do a corbin, they do it. It's a. Corbin, they it's a it's they go through the process, not on Pesach night, not on Pesach, Pesach night. Yeah. They're expecting that the Mashiach comes. Come, they're going to be able to. Okay. Do it's like like so doing a model are. seder. Uh huh. Right. Like but they get everything ready. They get the the kohanim are ready. The sheep is ready. They shech the sheep. The whole shmir. Yes. They shech the sheep too. Yes, they do. No one. The sheep doesn't come out of this alive. No, 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 no. I understand, but I thought that. You know, they would check it only if Mashiach was coming. No, they want to, they want to keep alive the it's tradition, a, what it is. Rehearsal. One of oh. the challenges we have in Judaism is that any time we lose a tradition, it's hard to restore it. Right? The whole idea of what is Tcheles. We forgot what Tcheles was. Now no one wants to accept it. Right? We don't really know what it is. We don't have a tradition. Wears it. Okay. Not everybody wears it. Not everybody wears it. No. Okay? 
problem. You can't do anything with it. Well, they can't do anything with it. I guess if they shecht it correctly, they could use it to eat for a sheep. Yeah, probably. That's but I'm saying, but they actually do shecht the sheep. By the way, they have to get a permit for this, and sometimes you're, they're more different. They don't, do, they don't do it, by the way, in the base of Mikdash, of course. No. They've done it. They've done it, for example, the Tayelet, or just south, or just oh, off yeah. the Tayelet, which is overfaces the, um, the Harabayit. And mean? they need a permit to do this because it's uh, something that can be very religiously. In the of the city. Right. Oh. It's very religiously, creates a lot of tension. The Arabs get excited. Yeah. The, the lefties get excited. The secularists, <laughs> everybody gets excited what people do. And some of the religious Jews get excited. Oh, you yeah. know, in Israel, you don't have to work hard to get people excited. So they, they do have, they do get a get request permission. Some years they get it. Some years they don't. Okay. <laughs> Not the Shomer I'm talking about. Okay. Right. Correct. Okay. Okay. Onwards. Um, so that's about the, the Pesach. Then the next thing is Umachizim Esor Bim Duart Beit Um And in Beit was a was a, a room or a or a building that had a room where the Kohanim would warm up. Think of this as like if you go to an outdoor skating rink. And sometimes they have the room, the change yeah. room, right? And you go, right? I don't know. We must have them today. Yeah, every room's got a change room that's warmed up. They got a, something toasty going on. When I was a kid in Montreal, they, they had like public skating, they had a little building. Yeah, in the and building. There were fires? Actually, well, like a, not a fire. Well, this but is like indoors. Right. So this indoor, was an in, this was an indoor building, not that on the grounds of the base of Mikdash, because the Kohanim had to walk barefoot mm -hmm. on the stone floor. And if you've been in Jerusalem in the winter time, it's not so warm, right? So think about these guys going out there in the damp days and barefoot. So they would have, while they would change off their shift, they, well, in between things, they would go in there to warm up. So what can they do here? You can put in wood? What can you do? So, so, what, the so they actually would, um, they can start the fire to go and let the fire keep going. And... Um, and therefore, um, they just kind of light it, and, and it, it takes care of itself. So in other words, as long as you've got the fire lit on some of this fire in the base Hamoke, that's yeah. sufficient. Right? Yes? It says here, uh, you may, uh, and the fire may be lighted with chips. Right, so they have the, the means, so it actually means, you'll see the Gemara's going to talk about this. Oh. This is right before Shabbos. This means Im Chashecha, you light the fire, and then you're not worried that they're going to come to adjust the fire. Right, throw more wood. Throw more, more, more wood on it, put more chips on it, move the wood around. And once again, the Gemara's going to talk about this. The Gemara will actually say, this is talking about the, the fire that we just talked about is the Beis HaMoked. There's another fire, by the way, that they can adjust on Shabbos, and that is where they put on the Evar Mokedar, and they put on the different limbs at night. So that is actually Avodah. Avodah, you're supposed to burn it, so that actually was done, I believe, on Shabbos itself. But this is, this is simply a comfort area for the Kohanim to... So, but now, what's the Chiddush? The Chiddush is, you do this as Shabbos is starting, and, you're not not, and you don't have to worry that the fire is strong, that the fire is burning, you know, burning hard, burning bright. And then, uh, so also the Pesach and the Beis Hamoket are the exceptions, right? Because everything else right. you have to do pretty much to a certain degree is right. uh, that goes on autopilot. And then the last part of the mission, but Gvulin, and if you're making a fire or a fireplace or a bonfire in the Gvulin is outside the Beis Hamikdash or outside Yushalayim, your own personal fire, Berubo. Okay, that you have to make sure the fire is, is, is consuming most of the wood that's there. It's not, it's, cons it's not consumed, but it has taken hold of most of the wood. The concern is if it doesn't take care, it doesn't take hold of most of the large logs, then it may go out uh, or may dim, and then you want to need to fan it or adjust it or move the things around and make the fire become larger on Shabbos. So the, in, 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 in a base to make this, you just have to start this fire before Shabbos. In the Gvulim, you have to make sure be, uh, that it's holding on rubo, on most. How much is most? Not clear. Is most most of the logs? Is most most of every log? Is most most of the circumference of a log? Okay, mm -hmm. the, so the Gemara will talk about that briefly. But you get the idea. And Rav Yehudomer, it's one exception, that Bebchamim Kol when you're dealing with coals, charcoal. charcoals, right? We call charcoals, then they, they use them uh, fairly frequently. You don't have to make sure they all are going to um, be burning because they will retain their heat. Right, and if you ever use the old charcoal briquettes, right, you uh, looks like they're looks like they're, they're nothing, and then of course you blow away the white ash, and you see that they're glowing underneath. 
right? And you've, you've, you've of course heard, you know, number when, they, when there's a major fire and they go in, they're always worried about the hot spots that will kind of jump up. You look, it looks like it's, the wood is dead, right? It's all charred, and then suddenly there's a hot spot underneath it that are coals that are still live embers that suddenly catch on fire, and once again, the, the fire marshals and the firemen have to jump back. Okay, so this is really all about in line with the, all these fire things and fire regulations and cooking regulations right before Shabbos starts. Okay, next. So let's go right into the Gemara. So the Gemara says, Vakama. How much do one, does one have to cook, this bake, I'm sorry, roast, before Shabbos for it to be considered roasted? So the Gemara says, I'm Rav Elazim Rav, as I told you before, Kadesh Yotzulu, Mibodyom, Kamachol, Ben Drusoy. It has to be baked enough or cooked enough or roasted enough that Ben Drusoy would have eaten it, which is really, we normally say, is about a third of the way done. Itmanami, Amravasi, Amrav Yochlan, Koshu, Kamachol, Ben Drusoy, Ein Bo Mishulei Nochrim. This is not about Shabbos, this is an a, a, a unrelated but I guess a parallel kind of theme, there's something called Bishul Enochrim, right? We call Bishul Akum, mm -hmm. right? That you cannot have, so you, cannot have a, uh, you must have a Jew involved in the cooking, or really you can't have a guy who is involved only in the cooking of items for us, even if the food is completely kosher. There has to be some kind of involvement of the Jew. So the Gemara says, once the stuff has been cooked partially, then it's, you don't even have to worry, the, the guy can do the rest of it. That's what this is saying. Now. That's what that's saying. So it's another, it's another example of machal ben drusai, which is really applied as if the food is cooked. Okay. Can you like this today? For, for that? Yeah, yeah. yeah, we actually pask in that a, a Jew can do minimal amount of, of, of cooking the food. Right, turn the light on, but I'm just saying... That's the same thing. Yeah, but I'm saying, so, so, so if it's a third cooked... And it's a short, yeah. Yeah, it's for sure. Oh, okay. And the boy takes over, he's saying it's fine. Is that right, yeah, correct, right, know, yeah. So that's, I mean, what, what, of course, what happens is that um, I mean, the way we do it today is either there's, um, the, the Jew puts on the fire, yeah, right, right. right, puts on the gas, puts on the pilot light. If you ever see, by the way, the mashkech at Sobe's one, uh, after Shabbos, when he leaves Shul, he runs into Sobe's. I think it's one of the things he does. The mashkech. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? I forgot his name. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, yeah, guys, well okay. whoever it is, but he stops off on the way home, he stops in the Sobeys. To 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 I believe what, one of the things he does is he wants to light the fires. So they can bake overnight for Sunday morning to have bread when you come in. Okay? Bread and whatever else is being made. Okay? Um, and he probably does also you know, spot check as well. But um, they sometimes they will have like a pilot light that's inside the oven. Right, which may not, which may be actually more integral to the oven rather than your pilot, old pilot lights, which were really kind of sometimes external to the very side. Um, or there are different ways that they can have something that will keep going. But that's a halach about um, about bishuleyakum, bishulenachrim. So all all the point of it is that you see macho ben soy is a definer for what is con something is considered cooked. Tanya Hanan Yomer Kol Shehu Kamacho Ben Drusoy Mutar Lashoso Agabe Akifa Agabe Kira Vyav Bishain Grufok Tuma. Once again, a similar kind of bray. So this is once again Shabbos. It says if something is already cooked, like Macho Ben Drusoy, you can put it on top of a kira on top of this on top of the oven. Uh, and even even if the oven itself is not cleaned from or swept from the coals themselves, well, the concern was that you would tend to kind of move the coals around and move or pull the coals away in order to make sure the fire wouldn't be dampened. Uh, and if once again, if you've gotten that far, you don't have to be concerned about it, and you can keep putting it on top of this on top of the kira. Okay. So that's really the same. This is pretty much just what we did in the mission itself. Next piece of Gemara. Ain nos nimasapas. So the Gemara, the Mishnah talked about putting the pot onto the oven, mm -hmm. and then you have to wait, and, and it has, by Shabbos starts, you have to have at least, the outside is crusted, crusted, yeah. crusted right? And then Rav Lazar said, was it Rav Lazar? Rav Lazar said the tachton has to be crusted. Right. So here's the Gemara's question, standard, standard type of question. Ibailu, tachton hech, is it, is it tachton, is the hech legabe tanur? Is it the bottom in relationship to the oven? Odilma tachton hech legabe haor. Or is the tachto, in other words, the tachto mean the part that's the bottom facing the oven, mm -hmm. the wall, the stuck wall. to the wall, or is it facing the fire which is on the bottom? Okay. So the Gemara says, well, let's read, let's find what this says in this price. It says, Tashma, So we have a brisa that brings Rav Lazar's opinion, and there it's much more definitive and more clear that where's the bottom that's stuck to the oven. So the bottom is the top, and the top is the bottom. If that helps you. Okay. Uh, 
picture of the oven, I'll show them. It's a just triangle. Like said, yeah. just like a, a that is the oven, or that is, that's, or that's for the Korm Pesach. Oh, that's the Pad Betanur. Show them, yeah, show yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there it is. It's like a somewhat cone-shaped type. Right. Like a lava oven. Like like a lava oven. The there's a little wider, but there's a little wider. The concept of this, the key to this, is that the opening is from the top. Yeah, yeah, we don't have that anymore. We have openings the in the front. In the bottom, yeah. That was a chiddush that with the, the modern inventions that the open, opening is in the front. I mean, it's not modern. It probably goes back to early modernity. Who wants to kind of be able to top, you know, the, the oven is the top of the oven blocks the whole thing. So if you can have a side entrance, which is much more convenient, and keep your top for something else, that's even better. So uh, it's one of the early modernity <coughs> inventions. Any rate. Um, where are we up to? Mishal Shemesa Pesach. Okay, my time. Well, what's the reason why for Pesach it's different? So this is what I told you before. So simply the Gemara, Mishom, the Bnei Chavura, Zrizin Hain. The people of the Chabura. Chabura, of course, what's a Chabura mean? The group, right? Chaver, Chabura, Chaverim. So uh, you had to be part of a group to eat the Karm Pesach. You couldn't just show up at the last minute. Right, every when the before the carbon pesach was shechted, you had to be on listed on the manifest. Well, I this think they had to, like a, a group of people had the mm. one carbon pesach, right? Yeah, but so I'm saying, but you couldn't simply say, "Oh, hey, Joe, we got a couple of extra pieces here. You know, we got a second cut chop. And would you would want to come over?" So you can't do that. You have to all be part of the chaburah before before the animal was shechted. That's what it means. So, the, so they ate it. It was shechted for the chaburah. They bought it together and they ate it together. Okay. Sorry? Kazayas. Kazayas of meat. So that's why, if you think, I'm not sure how much of a kazayas of meat would be, but. Um, you have to at least kazayas of more, could you? Right, you, actually, right. So, um, so as a result, you could have a lot of people. It's, it's a sheep now, yeah. right? It's chadgaja, it's a gadi. So I'm not sure how much meat there actually is, but there's surely a whole bunch of kazayasim that you could get out of it. And it was eaten, by the way, it was eaten at the end, right, a la sova. So you already eaten your, um, you know, other things as well. But a chagiga, karma chagiga was eaten. You had other parts as well, matzah, marar, right? And if you were hilla, you had matzah, marar, and the karma pesach <laughs> together. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, but, but, and, and that's why, you know, that's really why we have the afikoman at the end, right? That's the zeich, that's really the zeich to the mikdash. Right, I mean, that's the, the, the recreation of eating the Karm Pesach at the end. After you had your soup and nuts and everything else, then you got to have the Safi Komen. It's Allah Sova. In fact, it's a big Shiloh. What happens if you only have one matzah? Right, well, I mean, you have three matzahs. What happens if you only have enough for one matzah? Right, mm. you, well, should you use it for the first motzi, for mm. the first matzah, or should you save it for, should you not do that and go and wait till after the meal is over and then do motzi matzah? I forget mm. what the answer is. Okay. We'll have yeah, to look the it answer up. is not what you think it is. That's what I remember. Uh, well, right. Whatever it is, but I'm saying, but it really relates to if you think you think about you make you, you cut you eat you break the first matzah you say yeah. motzi matzah and yeah. you say I'm motzi lech right. plus motzi matzah mitzvah ala chilas matzah yeah. right. right that's the mitzvah and then, but the real mitzvah looks like it's the very end okay. Right. Okay. So Meshach uh, says so Gemara says my time of the bnei chabur is the reason hein. Okay. So wait. So the Gemara says wait halav hachi halav hachi lo. You mean to say, if it's not the carbon Pesach, you can't really do this. Uh, you can't um, put it in and let it r- cook on, on, on Shabbos with a gadi, with a very, um, this is a small animal, which is quick to kind of um, um, cook and, and roast, I should say. V'omar mar, we had learned earlier on in this Masech, on Daf Yedches, G'daya, right? G'daya, G'daya, G'di ben Shorek, ben Lo Shorek, Shapir Domi. So uh, that if you have um, a gedi, that's a shorik, I think means it's this, the oven is sealed. If the oven, whether the oven is sealed or not, uh, they translate it. Sealed, sealed right. The, whether the oven is sealed or not, you can still let it cook on, on Shabbos on Friday night. So the Gemara says, Hasa mintach, hachalom mintach. So, so why over here is it, but with the concern is for a gedi, that only a Pesach you could do it. You see a Gedi is normally done regularly on any, any Friday night with anyone. So Gemara says the difference is Hasam Mintach, Hasam Lo Mintach. If the Gedi Mintach is from being cut up. If the Gedi is cut up into pieces, so it's going to cook real quick. Right? This Gedi that is on Pesach night is a whole Gedi. 
right? So as a result, it's going, it's more complicated, it's going to take longer, so even if the oven is closed and sealed, you may come to open it, so that would only be for the carbon Pesach. That's how the Gemara resolves the conflict. Okay. So, so, ordinary one, an ordinary the one, that the oven is sealed, the oven is closed, the oven is plastered, You've plastered and sealed the, the lid shut. On an ordinary shop. An ordinary, so then you actually can put it in and, and, and let it cook um, all through Shabbos, and provided that it looks like it's already cut into little pieces. Uh, however, if it's not cut, um, and, and why? So the Gemara, the Gemara actually says, Nafirches, because this is such a tender kind of meat that if you were to start to move around the coals, you would release a lot of smoke and steam and, it would, and the atmosphere would change that would ruin the gadi. So therefore, something like a gadi that is cut up, that's sealed, that you put a protection around it not to do it, and you surely wouldn't do it, you could actually let it cook on its own on Friday night. Uh, on, on, if it's not cut together, if it's not cut apart, then the only time you can do it is on Pesach night. Okay. Now, next thing was by Machizim Esor. Machiz Mesar, this is where that you let the, the fire catch. This was for um, the Kohanim in the Beis Hamoket. We think it's for Bimdur and Beit Hamoket, right? Machiz Mesar. So Gemara says, and it's a little more complicated piece of Gemara, Minah Nimili, Amarav Huna lo Sivarish Bechomosh Vosechem. So the Torah says, this is the Mokar in Parshas Vayakel, which actually talks about Shabbos. Okay, and, and they, actually there's one malacha that is singled out in the Pasuk. It says, It's the only one. It's the only one. the only one that is singled out directly. All the others we learn out from the building of the Mishkan, the malachas that were needed to build the Mishkan, which is what we're going to do once we go to the seventh parak. Right, but the only one that is singled out is about about um, Los Ish. The Gemara will actually discuss why is Los Ish singled out. Why do we have? Why, why does the Torah give us one malacha? They either give us all or give us none. So the Gemara has two opinions. One opinion is it's either the lav yatsa tells me that ash that if you make ash you don't get you don't have to bring a carbon chatas if you did it by accident. It's just an ish lav. It's a losase. Okay, so it was done for the lav. Or the other opinion the Gemara is lechalik yatsa. It listed us one. It doesn't tell us why specifically ish, but listed one of the thirty nine malachas to say that you are going to be chayav for each and every individual malacha. So we have thirty nine malachas, and you did thirty nine malachas. You're chayav for one, all thirty nine individually. The same way that ish is singled out as an individual thing. But that's not what we're going to talk about now. The, right. pos- the point of this is, it says, Lo svarish b'chomo shosechem b'yom ha-shabbos. That's the end of the Pasuk. So you can't make fire in all your mosh vosechem. So the Gemara darshans from this, b'chom mosh vosechem y'a tom avir, a tom avir b'mdort b'it moked. You can't really light a fire in ho- at home, but in the base of Mekdash, you could do it. And the, and the way we have this initial understanding of the Jvashim from Afuna is which part of the base of Mekdash we're talking about means the, um, the, f- the fire where they warmed up there themselves. So the Gemara, the, and the, the, you're all saying, well, that sounds like a conference issue. Why should that happen? So the Gemara says, Maski Flora Chista. If this is true, that, you, that the, the Drush is really telling us that you could light this fire in the Beis HaMoked, why does the Mishnah seem to say that this is only Im Chashecha? Because everything that's being listed here is about either right Im Chashecha or Im Chashecha, it has to reach a certain point. Why not say that they could light this all, all through the night? The Drash seems to say that you can't light a fire in your house, but you could light it somewhere in the base of Mikdash. That's not just Friday night at 4 o'clock or 4.30. That's Friday night at midnight, right, when it really it gets cold. So the Gemara says, the, Gemara says well, well, the, the Mishnah, the topic of the Mishnah, it doesn't say it specifically, and we, I, I kind of hedged when I read it, it wasn't clear, but the last line of the Mishnah, the last line of the of Ahmed Bet, we, of where the Mishnah says, Machiz Mesar B'mdurat Meitam Moked, doesn't say when this is, but everything else in this Mishnah is about Im Chashecha. It's clear that it's really talking about Im Chashecha. So the Gemara says, well, if this is really okay, because it's not Mosh Vosechem, hey, you can do it a whole Shabbos. Why is this only Im Chashecha? Why do you only have to start at Im Chashecha and then you'll assume that it goes on its own? Why not start it? Let it start it at 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock and 12 o'clock at night. The Maske of Rav Chista, Yachil Fiyabu Shabbos Nami. Ella Amar Rav Chista. Comes along Rav Chista saying, no, 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 we don't really have the Jewash right. The drush alo sevaro eish b'chol mosh vosechem 
is not to say that at home you can't make a fire, but you can make a fire in the base and make dish in the base of moked, midor beit the moked. No, kro kiyasa le mishre evar mu pedar mu diyasa. The Torah tells us that Friday night, what can you actually put on and light and burn and incinerate on Shabbos? late Friday night, mm-hmm. is the limbs and the different fats that were put on at the end of every day. This is what was done. We have, we had every, every, there were different parts of the day for Korbanos, and you know we have three tfilos every day, Shachris, Mincha, and Marav, yes? Right? Yeah, there are various reasons for it. The Shachris Tfila is because in the Beis Mikdash there always was a communal Tamid Shal Shachar. Yeah. So even if no one else showed up with anything else, yeah. Even if it was a slow day, right. there always was a uh, there always was a one communal sacrifice. The tumish in, in the morning. That's right. chakras. Right. Mincha was right. because in the afternoon there was a tumish shell bain harbaim. Wasn't called tumish and mincha. Exactly. Tumish in the afternoon. And that's all. That's chakras and mincha. What about marav? There so I know you're going to tell me Avram, Yisroch, and Yaakov. No, three different parts of the there was no carbon. The answer is, says says the says the says the Gemara Maseches Brachos that the uh, they always had to have there were always leftover limbs that were burnt. Even if it was a slow day, you had the leftover limbs from the Tamish Shachar and the Tamish Shabbat Rabayim. Those were incinerated late at night when the Mizbeach was finished with all the carbonos. They stopped bringing carbonos probably in the late afternoon. So let's say three o'clock, four o'clock, the office closes. Right? They're not doing any more carbonos. What, what happens? You've got all this whole pile of all the leftover fats and limbs that were not burnt, right? that were carbonos, that were not part of what was born on the Mizbeach. They were burnt then at night itself. That's what, what Marv is for, because if something happened in the base of Mikdash. Now, you look at me, Moshe, what? Well, only because, what can I, I mean, I accept what the, you're saying, but to me, it's like, um, I don't know. Like, why don't we repeat the, the Amida? Let's say, so that that's how it shows so you. That to, me, to me, it means because, like, the first two no, are, are connected with the Tommy. And right, and the, 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 that's why Marv is different. That's why Marv, according Marv to the Gemara, says is Rishus. Right. That's why there's yeah. no Chazar Sashats. Yeah. Right? Not so much Shema in the Marv, the actual Amida of Marv. So, so it's, yeah, it's called yeah. Rishus in the Gemara, though for us we consider it really Chova. Yeah. It's called Rishus. Why? Because it's not the same as Shachris and Mincha that had a direct connection to a sacrifice, they a communal were sacrifice. They were, right the they were there. But, but at the same time, something was going on. And it always was going on, because that's when they brought these things. As a result, there always was at night, when we stay, when we daven Marav, mm-hmm. in the evening, there always was the burning of these different leftover limbs that were not brought on the altar when the carbon was brought. Because not all of the carbon was put on the altar. Only certain parts were put on the altar. Olo was completely burnt, Olo, but that. some parts were like, there was only the chaze, the shoulder, and the, sh- and the, sh- and the shank. So, so there were different parts. That was from the Gaon and D. Correct, but there were parts that weren't burnt directly. So all of that stuff was put and burnt at night. As a result, this could be done, or this was done on Friday night, Shabbos. And on Shabbos. On, I mean, that Friday night on Shabbos, yeah, yeah. Friday night after dark. This was what the Drush is telling us. At your house, you can't light a fire. Right. Right? In the Mesa Mikdos, yes, you can light a fire. And yes, you can adjust the fire. And yes, you can, be, can, yes, you can make the fire work to burn the Evar and yeah. For the Mesa Moked, for this fire, which was really meant to keep the Kohanim's feet warm and to warm them up from working late nights when it was cool or late days when it was cool, so that you could start the fire right before sunset. You didn't have to worry that the fire consumed the entire log pile, the entire fireplace, or the entire bonfire, like with, with a person doing it outside the base of Mikdash. Why? Because the Kohanim was reason. So if it went out, they're going to say, too bad, Charlie. <coughs> it's going to be a cold night in the base of Mikdash. But if you were home and you lit it, and you didn't do a job lighting it well, you didn't do a good job lighting it, and it begins to go out late Friday night, it's a good chance you may say to yourself, ah, who will know, and I'll just kind of move around the logs, or I'll take away the ashes, or I'll just adjust the fire. Right? Because you're by yourself. Corn and we're working together, and each wanted one to, each wanted to make sure it was done properly. So if I understood what he said, I just want to have it sink in to me clearly. Right. He's saying... That in the base of Mikdash, you couldn't light a fire on Shabbos to, let's say, to warm the to warm the carnival's feet. But, but you because the word Moshave, Moshvechem, Moshvechem doesn't mean just in your house for like normally in your house. It means 
In the base of Migdash, you can do it, but only for certain kinds of no, things. No, no, Moshe Vosechim means your house. Right, I'm saying. You cannot light a fire, which for us understands means you can use a fire, but you can't right, light and right, enlarge right, a fire. Right, right. In your house, you can't do it. In right. the base of Migdash, <clears throat> you can. Why? Otherwise, if you couldn't do it, if you couldn't have any fire in the base of Migdash, and you couldn't right. adjust any fire, you should have said, Lo Sivaroish, period. The fact that the post says, Lo Sivaroish, Bechom Moshe Vosechim, Biyom Mashabas, why does it tell us, Yom Bechom Moshe Vosechim? Your house. Yeah. Your private residence, you can't do it. In Beis Hamikdash, you could. What in the Beis Hamikdash? Oh, what in the Beis? What, what had to be done in the Beis Hamikdash? The avoda, anything that was part of the necessary avoda. So if you bring in carbonos, <coughs> they brought a carbon musaf on Shabbos. They brought tamishos, tamishos shachar. Who are the carbonos that were brought? Absolutely. So all of this needed to be sure that the fire pile, the fire pile remained active. There were, by the way, multiple piles on the mizbeach, right? Multiple, multiple fire piles burning. So these were kept burning, and when they and 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 forget about trying to adjust the fire, they were incinerating meat on the mizbeach. Right, right. And that's they, also ish. That's also absolutely. they're cooking. They're and, burning. And they decided that these avarim was right, is required to be done. Been, there was a chova to do that. Correct, and therefore they were done Friday night after Shabbos started. But for the base hamoka, they couldn't do it Friday. They couldn't light it Friday night. But they just needed to minimally make sure that the fire caught onto the fi onto the bonfire. Uh -huh. Didn't have to be completely or in large consumed. Gotcha. Okay, why? So also says that about the fats and the oils that were permitted to be done all night. The same reason, Kronkoyim is reason, that they'll come to do the mitzvah right. at the right, right time. Right. But Ramban says it the other way. They only have a limitation only to the katsos. Correct, because we're afraid they may not do it. Right. Rumbum's Correct. Rashi's, Rashi gives the same reason, like right. we just said. So what Tovi is saying is talking about the time for Dabling Mar, which is really related to when these were these Evarmim Tarn were brought, whether they did it all night or whether they brought it before midnight because we're afraid they may not do it. If there really is a reason, then we shouldn't really be concerned they'd forget. Right? You yeah. go you come home late at night, you say I want to do something and you get tied up with something else and you, you don't do it. But the Karnam would would not do it. It's a good point. Okay, next piece of the Gemara. Ugvulim kadei shetochaz ar berubo. And outside, gvulim means outside the base of Mikdash, right? Outside the base of Mikdash with a special rule about lighting Friday night for the Kohanim's feet as Shabbos started is okay. So outside that, it has to really take hold of rove, most of the fire pile. How much is most? My ruban, you know. Amar Rav, <coughs> rove kol echad v'echad. Okay, it has to be most of every log that's in the fire pile has to be burning. Okay, so in other words, 51% of every log has to be on fire. Okay, in other words, you could, you could argue it's um, the aggregate total of the fire has to be 51% of all the logs. This seems to say that every log has to be burning 51%. doesn't say, by the way, that they're consumed 51%. It says they're burning, okay? And Shmuel says something a little more logical, not logical, but a little less scientific. He says it's enough that the fire would be burning and they don't have to say bring more wood underneath it to prop it up and create more of an air space. In other words, it's a really, it's a strong frame. Okay, Tana Rav the Shmuel. So Rav Chia brought a brisa or stated a brisa that supported Shmuel, and the term that he has there is Kadesha de shall have us Ola me eleha, Veloshate shall have us Ole Aide Davar Acher. So that the fire is going up by itself, but not that it needs to be assisted in terms of it to into into burning. Mm -hmm. So this um this is actually um the question really where this comes from, this really relating to um to Shabbos. Mm -hmm. Is this really about the menorah, the lighting of the menorah in the base of Mikdash? This is where it comes up in the second parak in Bamemet Likin. Um, or is it a different brisa that they're referring to about the menorah? But Madura Rashi quotes a number of, of suggestions. It's not really clear, but apparently there was a brisa that uh, it could, now. If you say that it's about what they needed to light the actual wicks of the menorah in the base of Mikdash, not the Hanukkah menorah, the actual menorah in the base of Mikdash. So it's the same concept. The fire that's going to be combustible and to consume and continue to consume has to be shalheves olam eleha. That's about the menorah. That's an oil menorah. This is about wood. 
So it may take different amounts of effort, but it's the same concept. What is considered a durable flame, the fire burns on its own. Yeah. Okay? Uh, yeah. What do you call it? A, uh, um, the terms a jolly fire or something, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the fire, the crackling fire in the yeah, in the it's fireplace, going, it's going, it's going, right? Well, that's what it means. Okay, yeah. so no, then that's when you walk away from it. It's going to continue yeah. burning. All right, now so that's about the bonfire. Then the gemara, of course, you know, the gemara always goes down to this micro level. Um, so what about eight yichidi? What about one wood? So let's say you got one one piece of wood. So I know about what it means. Shahavas olamele. I don't have to look at the entire bundle. I know what it means um, if I'm looking at fifty one percent of all the wood of each wood. What about one 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 piece of wood? So how much is most? So rav omar rov ovav. So Rav says most of the thickness or most of the circumference. Okay, it's not necessarily the same thing. Most of the most of the thickness means that the fire has really actually gotten into the inside of the wood. It's burned really into the core. Or most of the circumference is easier, more easy to measure. You can see the, the flames jumping along most of the circumference of the wood, but you don't know really what's underneath the bark. Right? Sometimes the bark can burn fairly quickly. So Amra Papa, so there are two opinions. So what of course usually happens when there are two opinions, you can't resolve it. Hilkach bin a rov of bin a rov akefo. Okay, so you have to have therefore both. If you want, if you want to have one piece of wood and you want to burn it for Shabbos, so you have to make sure that if you start it before Shabbos, most of it is, is most of the thickness is burning and most of the circumference is burning. Kitanai. Mm-hmm. Okay, there's a machlokas time related to this. Rav Chiyomar, Kadeshi Shaches Ho'eitz Bimlecha So'uman. So, what is this referring to? So, this is. Um, right, this is also about Shabbos, I believe. Um, Right, but it's all, it's also about there's a machlokas tanoim. Well, how much to really does the wood have to burn? So either it is burning according to that the wood would be destroyed from using for a craftsman. So a craftsman uses a piece of lumber, uh, and he's going to want to whittle it down. If most of the wood is burned through, um, then you really can't use. It's no longer usable for the craftsman. Like, if the edge is burned, it's fine. Half of it is burned, it's fine. But if it's, if it's really burned most of the way through, and uh, most of the place, mm-hmm. so now that is going to be, that's rov ovov, means most of the thickness. If the fire has, has permeated most of the thickness of the wood, it's not possible to reclaim this for any use at all by a wood craftsman, by a, by a carpenter. Um, that's one opinion. Rav Yehuda ben Meseyam, America, they should talk, so eish, mishneit stad, mishneit stadim. That it's um, the um, the two ends of the uh, wood are are burning. In other words, the fire is burning on the two ends, and the way the Gemara is trying to 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 match them up, this is going to be rov hekefo. In other words, if the two ends are burning, then the most of the circumferences is probably in flames. So that says what we find here is two opinions in Rav or Rav and an Amri law. So is for Rav Papas, the um, Rav, Chia, Rav Chia says and is arguing Rav Yehuda ben Beseira that there are um, there are two different ways that are very that are look to look to line up that way. The Alpha Pin Shein Ra'iladavar. Uh, even though there really isn't a proof to support this kind of concept of two ends burning in a wood that really defines what it is. So Yecheskel uh, says in Parak Tazayin, Eshtei Ketzos of Achla is talking about the Jewish people. How the Jewish people have been um, uh, completely dried up. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you know, they dried up from Hashem, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to dry them up and destroy them, Kilo almost, and then of course bring them back. So, Shnei Ketzosav Achlo Eish, that the two ends have been just been eaten up by fire, V'tocho um, Nochar, and the end, and the middle is kind of consumed, the, the or the um, Nochar, is means become dried out. So, you've got the two things here. One is you've got the Shnei Ketzosav on this piece of wood, which is in the simile of Yechezkel about the Jewish people. The two have been destroyed by the fire, the two ends. The the middle has been dried out, it's about to be consumed. Is it possible to use this kind of wood for work? And that's, of course, what, what, what Yechezkel is talking about in terms, of the, um, in terms of the comparison to the Jewish people who strayed from HaKadosh Baruch and the base mix will be destroyed, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth. Okay. So that's just like a zechel adobe. You see that these two things are actually mentioned in the Pasuk, and therefore kind of remind us of this machlokas of Tanayim about the two ways of what defines a wood that's burning. Good? Onwards and downwards. Okay, now the Gemara digresses for a moment 
And I think they brought one Pasuk from, from a Navi, which deals with fire, they bring another Pasuk. Okay? The next Pasuk really has nothing to absolutely do with Yecheskel. It actually has to do with the case where, um, who is the king, um, um, where Baruch ben brings the, the writing where the Vua is going to destroy the base of Mikdash and the king throws the, um, throws the writing into the fire. Uh, Yoyakim, I think it's Yoyakim, Yoyakim, right? So, so the fire is called the, the Ach. Ach is called the fire. The, the fireplace is called an Ach. I'm not sure what the origin is from. It's probably like brother? Like, like brother, correct? Like right. right, so this is actually, Rashi says it's Yoyakim. So they have, the, they, they produce this Megillah for Yoyakim, and he reads it, and he's so upset that piece by piece of the parchment, he cuts off and throws it into the fire. So, so it says there, we are Ach Lefanov Mevaeres. So that the um, ach in front of them is burning. Now, it's not clear what this word is. It means a fireplace, or it means some kind of fire. But it's a very strange kind of word. As Archie says, it's from brother. What's brotherhood doing here? This is about burning. This is about keeping warm. They probably had a fire going, like any, like you have central heating. They had fireplaces and all that in the, for the king. So my ach. So what is? So once again, this has absolutely nothing to do with anything except that it's just brought here because one pasuk from a navi about fire has another brings another pasuk. My ach. So I'm a rav. So, so rav says, and this one is rav as well. Achvana. Okay. So achvana means um, achvana is a willow tree. This was the willow branches were burning. Uh, that's what uh, that's what it was. So why were why why willow why willow trees? So the Rashi doesn't really say. But I saw somewhere that it says that when willow branches burn, they give them some kind of pleasant aroma. I don't know. Doesn't I don't know if it is or it is. Pleasant aroma? Yeah, I don't I don't know. You want come to my house and burn my burn, burn willows? Let me know. But that's I I would think that they're easy to burn. Maybe they're thin branches. I don't I don't know. Um, but but but. Um, at any rate, that's what the Ach is referring to. Achvana, it's nothing to do with brotherhood, has to do with a has to do with Arava. Shmuel Amar, Shmuel's answer is more the brotherhood of Archie. Amar, Eitzim Shnid Leklu Beachvana. These were from, uh, or Beachva, okay? Um, that we have Achvana really looks like it's Beachva, okay? So these were of, of wood that became lit by one connecting to the other. So you have small fire kindling wood that kind of lights to the other. And by the way, it may refer to the willow, which has very very thin branches. It's not, not the willow, like the willow we have for Arabus. I don't not know. Not the willow that we have here in the trees. I don't know. The willow, willow trees are also very thin. Trees yeah, I know, but they didn't have those in Israel, I don't think. Okay, so okay, so I said, come, come to my, come to my house and chop my yeah, willows down and like put it. Up. I don't have, I don't have an active fireplace. I can't try this at home. Anyone wants to try it, come ahead. You don't have to ask permission. Just come in the back door. Okay, so uh, but the the machlok is really once again, it's a sidebar to a sidebar that really has nothing to do with anything except that you see there is an unusual word and they give you two interpretations. One is achvana is about an arava. The other is that the eight sin would lend the kul be achvana be achva itself that they, they got together and that's how eight sin kind of take, uh, take off. The small fire kindling wood lights the bigger fire and it's like a brotherhood so to speak. That's why the fireplace is called the ach. But clearly it means that he throws it into a fireplace. The question is, what's the origin of this unusual world, word? Hahu the Omar, and now we have a story, like a little half bar about on the sidebar to the sidebar. Hahu the Amale, man boy achvana. Someone said, who wants, uh, where can I find achvana? Ishtakach arvason. They found, they brought him a ravos. Okay, so you see that achvana is really a ravos. Okay. Now, um, so far so good? Good, moving right along. Excellent, okay. Am Rav Huna, Kanim, Ein Srichim. Now, we said that in order to make sure the wood is going to burn with a strong fire, it has to be like rove, right? It has to be rove of the circumference, rove of the thickness. Otherwise, you don't really have a strong enough fire that you can let it go on its own. This has to be burning strongly before Shabbos, except if you're in... The base of Mikdash working on the base of Moket for the Kohanim to stay warm. So now these are the exceptions to the rule. Amrav Huna, Kanim, Kanima reeds, Ein Srichim Rov. Kanima reeds, they're very thin, they are very combustible apparently, so therefore if you got a fire, I don't know how long it would last actually, yeah. but if you had a fire of reeds that was a very you know, large, like a side on all these, um, do you ever see these, the, the Woodman f- um, Festival where they were Burning Man? 
right? Oh, they make yeah, this. Where they make yeah, that yeah. thing out of? They don't make it of wood. They make it of like um, f straw and, and yeah. right. Yeah, so yeah. this is what Carney Marsh. Carney Marsh were kind of right. So that's what they're doing. So these. So they they build it because they can build it very high and it's very easy. It's not that heavy. And when it takes off, it kind of burns brightly. And Burning Man is burning. So Carney Man Srichem Rov. You don't need most of them to be lit for most of most of the branches to be lit in order to make sure it's going to keep burning on Shabbos. However, Agdam, if you tie them together, like in Burning Man, Tzrichim Rov, then you do need to make sure that most of them are being burned, are burning before Shabbos. Um, Garinim, ain't Tzrichim Rov. Garinim are seeds. Now this probably sounds strange to you that they would burn seeds. Right? But I want you to think of this as more like olive, olive pits. Think of big olives with big olive pits. Mm -hmm. And if you dry them out, you don't dry them because when you get the olive pit, it's just soaked in vinegar or whatever it's soaking in. But if you could dry out these pits, you would actually have a combustible kind of thing that probably could not be recycled to anything else. So, or other kinds of large pits. So actually in a society where they would r really recycle what they had and use everything, this could be used. So as a result, if you have garinim, um, you do uh, actually. Rashi says they're garinim shel tamara. They're date uh, pits. Okay, it's the same thing. It's even bigger. It's better. Okay. Yeah. So if you made a bonfire out of date pits when they got dry, so you don't need ain't srichim rov. You don't need rov because once again they're also I guess they're high high combustibility. Nas nam bechol If you put them in some kind of basket which they would hold these pits, Tzrichim Rov. So once again, that would impede the combustibility because the, the baskets were made of something else, probably reeds or something, but then they were too tightly put together, so you didn't know if part of it caught on fire, the rest would have, would may not have. So therefore, that would need Rov. Maskif Lorav Chista. Ad Rabba Ibcha Mestabra. Okay, actually, no, the, uh, the opposite is, is, is more logical. Kanim Mevadram, Mevadran Ogdam Lo Mevadram. That um, kanim uh, is will um, kanim are the reeds uh, and move around. I think, and therefore, if one will burn, it will not necessarily move to the next one. But if you tie them together, loma vadram, they will not. They're not going to be mobilized. So consequently, the the um, the kanim are more combustible when they're tied together in bundles mm -hmm. than when they're untied. The reversal we said before. Right. And garinim mevadram. I'm not sure what, what does mevadram means. Um, fall apart. Fall, oh, fall apart. Can't fall apart. They can't fall. Okay, from badad. Okay, so yeah. on, 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 but so the garinim can once can. What you say? Scatter. scatter. They can fall apart and scatter, and that's the same thing with the other ones. So the garinim can fall apart. So therefore, as a result, it's hard to keep the the mash or the mix, which is dry together. So if they're separate. You really need to make sure that the rove takes place. If you put oh. them in baskets, it's they're not going to scatter, and therefore they you need less to work to. It says if they fall apart, they don't catch fire from each other. Right, it's correct. Just, yeah, right. So, in other words, same thing with the reeds. If the reeds were separate, they fall apart. They begin one one begins combusting and then falls over. If you tie them in a bundle, they can, they have to stay together. Right. The same use thing with the, the garinim. Use the word mitpazri. So right. yeah. Mitpazri. Okay. Good. It's my nami. I'm Rav Kahana. Kanim she agdam tzrichim rov, lo agdam ain't tzrichim rov. Is that the right girsol? There's probably different girsols that are here too. Okay, so once again, the same thing that this is like uh, Rav Kahana saying, like Rav Hamnuna, that um, that they if they're tied together, you do need rov, and we do. I mean, there's another girsol on the side that seems to flip it around the other way. But as at any rate, you see that there is this kind of uh, discussion about whether you need them together or not together. Kanim she agdam tzrichim rov. Or um, uh, or kanim shagdam lo tzrichim rov and lo agdam or yes agdam ain't tzrichim rov or yes tzrichim rov. It's just confusion in the gersos and the same thing for garinim tzrichim rov naslam bechutalos ain't tzrichim rov. It's the same thing that you see. We have a, a statement which is just which is clearer and more and says the same thing. Okay, now so this is all almost at the last the very end here. So as a result. Everything, these are the exceptions to the rule that you have to make sure rove is going to be consuming, right? These kanim or these garinim, do they have to be tied together, not tied together, in a basket, not in the basket? And then there's one or two more exceptions here. Tani Rav Yosef, Arba Maduros, Ain Srichim Rov. There are four bonfires, four types of different unique woods that do not need that most are being combusted as Shabbos started. Right, because it looked like everything else was except for reeds and garinim, and they are as follows: shell zephet. Zephet is uh, like a tar wood. Um, um, 
the zephet may be the fire made of zephet. Um, pitch, pitch, pitch. What's pitch, pitch, like pitch, pitch and which tar? Tar, like but it could be. It could be like flammable. Yeah, it's flammable. It is flammable. Sure. It's very flammable. Right, right. Yeah. So, so, con- so consequently, it's like petroleum. Yeah, it is it petroleum. Is a kind of, yeah, it's petroleum or from trees or whatever. Right, whatever it is. So it, it's a this t- <laughs> correct. One of one of the mistakes, by the way, that JNF made when they planted their forest was they planted evergreens. They planted pine trees, which, not, are, not, is which is not indigenous, but are actually highly flammable once they catch because of the fact of the sap. Mm-hmm. So. Um, oh. So ecolog- ecologically, it was a mistake. And then when you see there is a forest fire, like, you know, happened in Mount Carmel, that was actually very disastrous because of the trees they planted. Anyway, just sidebar. Now, at any rate, this is Zephyr, is this pitch which is really going to catch, f- it's going to go up in fl- flames. Sure. Right? As a result, you don't need the if rope. you don't need most of it burning, because it's going to burn. When it goes, it goes. Vishel Gafrid, Gafrid is sulfur. I guess also very sulfur flammable. flammable. Yep. Vishel Gvina. Gvina is cheese. No, just a okay. <laughs> What just a minute? The cheese burns so well. Cheese is fat in it. Yeah, well, it does have fat, but says, I wouldn't... Oh, fuzzy how well it wears. I think the Greeks have that. Gvava, maybe gvava. Um, there's, there's, the no, gvava is later on. Gvava is afterwards, yeah. Who's the notes? Mr. Says, Santino? Al- yeah, al- fuzzy reads al- fuzzy. wax. Okay. So it's a kind of wax. Okay. What's the kind of wax? Gvina. Cheese. What's the kind of wax? This Gvina. This cheese is a kind of wax. That's what he says. I don't know. No, no, I don't say no. It makes more sense to be the kira. (laughs) Right. The uh, grog quotes the riff. It says kira. Kira, which is a wax. So it's either Gavino, it's either fatty cheese. For those who don't like burning cheese, (laughs) I guess you have to consider that it was a type of cheese that had a very high fat content. And as a result, if it caught, I I know it can't burn, but think if you put a wick into it, it probably could burn. Okay. Try tomorrow night for Shabbos. So no, don't try tomorrow night for Shabbos, okay? Yeah. So, so, so what, 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 what Rav Stein's al says, Michelle Gvina Yevei Shak. So yeah. maybe they had a okay. dry kind. Where okay, dry not. cheeses, the old, you know, the Italian cheeses that you see hanging in the old Italian stores were dried out cheeses, the ones that really smelled. A dry cheese that has a very high fat content yeah. and probably has some kind of wick which is going to allow the fire to really take off, that will burn brightly. Okay, and so that's the third kind. And the fourth one is, and as, as Archie pointed out in the Gras says, it could be cheese or it could be this uh, wax. Vichelle, and, and wax actually is more applicable for us. Right? If you have a, a, a pile of wax, that's what our candles are, that's what our illumination was. They, they didn't have wax. Beeswax, beeswax. Today, maybe beeswax, if they didn't well, have paraffin. They didn't have paraffin. paraffin. I'm, and I'm saying, paraffin. But my have dollar candles. Maybe it's All right, I'm moving along, guys. Vichel, Vichel Ravav, and the Ravav is some kind of fat. Okay, some kind of fat or shiva or shuman. Uh, it could be animal fat. Sounds repugnant to us, but actually it probably works. So all of these four things really take off for combusting, and therefore you don't need rov. Masnisa Tana, Av Shel Kash Vishel Gvava. And in a brysa, they added two more kash is straw. Right. <coughs> which is distinct from reeds, by the way, it looks like, right? Straw is like straw from the field. Reeds are these humongously tall, tall, bush, tall bulrushes. And gvava is also some kind of stubble that they find in the field. I'm sorry? It's also similar to straw. Yeah. Amrav Yochanan, shall bavel, ain't srichim rov. So the trees of bavel, okay, we did not require, did not require most of it to be consumed. Now, what's going on in bavel that makes things so different? So, maskiflor of Yosef, maihi, what is, what, what kind of tree are we talking about, okay? So, ilema silta, um, what's a silta? <laughs> Um, <coughs> silta, are, silta are little matches, like thin silta are little thin strips of wood. Things, yeah, thin strips of wood. So silta is you take a tree and you make it into very th- like think of matches, okay? Matches without the sulfur ends. So it's not the tree, <laughs> not the tree so much. No, but it means wood. I guess what is what is eitzim shel bavel? Doesn't mean every tree in bavel. So ilema silta hashda psilam ra ula hamad liktsar sheid look barov. So we have if ula said that when you have a, a wick. <coughs> You've got to make sure that the, the light takes lights on most of the wick. Because sometimes you light a wick and it goes out. Right? Sure. Right? Just men are supposed to make sure the wicks are lightable mm-hmm. for the for the padlakas neighbor for Padlakas neighbors of Shabbos. And you've all had an experience where you see they they lit and it went out or or or, or, or Hanukkah, same thing. So in the Madlik Sarshid Lakbas, so sure for a wick. 
which is really combustible, you have to make sure it takes place on rov. Hayotze silsi, hayotze silsi mi something that comes from these little tiny matchsticks. Surely that would be the same thing. Ella, so that, that can't be somehow the matchstick trees of Bavel. Ella Amar of Yosef, Shuka di Arza. Uh, shuka de Arza is sometime a dried out um, type of tree and it's, um, it's, it's an Erez, it's some kind of cedar, but cedar is a very general term. But it means that there is this Shuka de Arza, there's this kind of um, fuzzy stuff that's growing bet- between the um, ch- branches of the Erez. And that itself is extremely flammable. I'm not sure what this fibrous material is, but once it takes off, it takes off. That's called Shuka de Arza. And Rami Baraba called it Zaza. He had another thing for it. I'm not sure what Zaza is. Why she says Mulshobalaz. But that's, sorry, moss. Moss, thank you, moss. So that's also moss. I don't know if moss is dried moss. Think of it as dried moss. Yeah. Think of it as, I don't know, peat or dross or something. So once again, these are the exceptions. Okay, Hadron Allah Yitzhiya Shabbos. That takes us to the end of the first barrack. So now let me tell you what we're going to do next. I would like to, I, I'd like to. I'm going to start the seventh parak. Okay, but I'm not going to start the seventh parak from the beginning. I'm going to start the seventh parak on Ayin Gimel Amad Aleph, which is the Mishnah that talks about the 39 Malachas. We're going to go from there till the end of the parak. The, uh, the very end of the parak actually talks about Shi'urim, of, of carrying out what has to be usable. Right, there are different shirim for different things, the last stuff. But really from Ayin Gimel all the way till the end of the seventh parak, which is probably about... Um, I don't know, seven, eight, nine, dap him, and we're going to do that. Then I more likely, most likely, we'll go back to the beginning of the seventh parak, but I, it's actually, it's, it's not simple. I'm learning it now. It's more complex than I thought it was. It's not that the topic is out of, out of, the, uh, out of Mars. It talks really about how much you have to remember and forget. What do you, how much is a shkaga and what's really considered a, an ones that you didn't know about it, and what if you never heard there was a Shabbos. And there's actually a, a very interesting piece of Gemara. We we're not going to get it until we end the, the, the seventh parak and go back to the beginning, about a person who gets lost in the desert. Famous story. You get lost in the desert and you forget which day is Shabbos. How do you set up? That's actually in the beginning. But at well, any rate, we're going to start from Ayin Gimel. So if you are an art scroll person, you will need volume two of the art scroll in Shabbos. If you're a Steinzolz, I don't know where it is. If you've got a regular Gemara Shabbos, it's in the Gemara Shabbos being in Ayin Gimel. We'll start with it next week. We'll give an introduction to the 39 Malachos, why they are Malachos, what defines them, what they're set up as, and then we'll go through um, Ayin Gimel, Amad Aleph, I believe so. Yeah, yeah right. Amad Aleph. Looks like the middle of the page. Right. And I love the way they can't say they're 39. No, they don't it's 40 minus 40. 1. <laughs> 40 minus 1. So.